Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on the inventory system that we started several videos ago. This will be uh, kind of the, the final touches of where I'm going to go with the inventory system. I am going to have another video where we go over some, uh, some cleanup items that we need to do and then uh, go over some ideas and methods that you guys can go further with your inventory system. Uh, but basically, we are going to implement the uh, actually adding the new the item that we're dragging back into a random slot uh, and then from there hopefully you can kind of understand how we do how we're communicating between the inventory window class and the selected item class and you can add your own unique uh, touches to it further down the road now if you guys have tons and tons of questions later on I'm be more than willing to make another video after these two to further talk about the inventory system but I'd like to definitely touch start touching on some more different things uh, for your games uh, like using the event system and using uh, coroutines and stuff like that. So, in this video, I'll do a quick rundown or a quick review of what we did last time, and then we'll jump right into coding uh, for this this video. So, last time we got up our inventory system running, we have the different types of icons with the different type of items, and we added the the eye drag handler or the drag handler, excuse me, interface that allows us to drag things, and we added the ability to drag around. Uh, an item and we talked about the logic about basically how we're storing that item into a its own spot because we can do different things with it um, we're not deleting it from the player inventory yet because we're not deleting the item but you have the option to and basically this is where I left you off with now this doesn't really work because when I click things nothing happens right it doesn't put the item where we want it and that's what we're gonna work on today and in this video uh, so we're going to be working in two classes, the Inventory Window class and the Selected Item class. So go ahead and open those up in your uh, editor. I'm using Visual Studio like normal. And here is the Selected Item class. This is the class that we're going to start in with. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add another interface. If you remember, we added this iDrag Handler interface, which it comes from the Library Event Systems in Unity Engine. Uh, and this allowed us to implement this method on drag method here and we're going to add another interface and this interface is going to be called i point down handler and i'm going to highlight this and i'm going to let my cursor or let it sit in a moment and it's going to bring up this little box and i'm going to say implement interface if you don't have uh, visual studio i don't know if mono behavior does that uh, but just in case go ahead and, and make sure you have this public void method it's called on pointer down let me zoom in a little bit make sure you can see it on pointer down, it takes pointer event data, and they called it event data. That's the argument. Uh, and you don't need to throw a new system exception. We're going to get rid of that. Now, first, I'm going to write a debug statement. Uh, it's just going to show you actually kind of how this works. And what we'll do is I'm just say I clicked down. Okay. Now I hit Control to save. Uh, we fully implemented the, the the interface here. It satisfies the conditions of us adding this meth, uh, this interface. Make sure you do implement it, otherwise you'll get an exception thrown. So when you do that, controls to save, go into Unity. I'll press play and just check out here down on the count on the console. When I click something, when I click one of these selected items, it's going to say on click down. So I'm clicking here on these little block boxes on our slots, and you can see it says I click down, I click down. Now when I click off, when I click on the inventory window, it doesn't know right because it's only attached to each of these individual slots uh, so that's what we're going to be using today uh, to work on the inventory system so now that we have that I'm gonna I'll go ahead and just comment this out we don't need this this is just for debugging purposes to show you kinda how it works uh, and we're gonna add a few lines of code the first one is we're gonna do an inventory window and we're gonna call it inventory window and this just creates a way that we can cache this object now the probably the smartest way to do this would be do it at the beginning uh, and we can do that in just a moment but we'll do it here first so we're looking for the uh, game object called inventory window uh, and we're gonna get its component called inventory window right and this is again this just caches this this class allowing us to access its public members now the smartest way to do this again uh, if you're looking if this is your big project you know you're not just doing the tutorial stuff to learn the best way to do this would be to call this in your start or awake function or on your on enable function at the very beginning of the script so right when it runs hey find this game object and cache it up here so that we can use it throughout the entire uh, class that's a smart way to do it uh, I'm not going to do that right now because 
we'll just cache it here. But for your projects, if you want to make sure that your coding is your code is a little bit more organized, a little bit better, a little smarter, so you're not using this game object find repeatedly uh, in the on drag event, you can do that. You can cache it. Uh, but anyways, go ahead and cache it. And then what we're going to say is uh, if do if statement. Oh, if inventory window dot being dragged, which is our uh, boolean that lets us know if we're dragging something, right? So we're saying, hey, if we're being dragged, meaning this is true, this boolean is true, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to do a few things. The first one is we're going to say this transform dot name. And we're going to leave it like that just for a moment because we're going to be adding a method here that gives us the name that we need, okay? Uh, and this is a good time to talk about the things that we need to do for this method basically when we click down what are the several things that need to happen well we need to make sure that we turn off that dragging image we don't need that anymore we need to rename the slot so that we can point to the correct information that's associated with that slot and we also need to uh, reactivate the child game object the item icon of that game object so we're going to do that with a new function a new method that's going to be in our inventory window class uh, and we're going to apply that to this this.transform.name and that's what we're going to work on now. So go in your inventory window class. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. And I'm going to scroll down right below our show drag item uh, method. And we're going to create a new public void for now. Uh, actually, we're going to return a string. And we're going to say add item to slot. And this method here is going to take a game object and we're going to call it slot. And we'll go ahead for. Uh, purposes for like just real quick we'll just say string temp oh and we'll say return string just so or excuse me temp so we can get rid of this little error here um, just so we don't have to look at these red lines they kind of bother me while we're coding but anyways we're going to be returning a string. It's going to be a public variable so we can access it in another class. It's going to be called add item to slot. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, it's going to take a game object and that game object is going to be slot. So now that we have this uh, method, control to save, go back into selected item class and we can uncomment this transform, this dot transform dot name. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to the inventory window dot add item to slot. And the game object we're going to pass it is this dot game object. So we're going to pass it this slot, okay? And we're going to leave that for now. Control to save again. Control us to save again. Go back into our inventory window class, and in the add items to slot uh, method here, we're going to write some some information. The first one we're going to do is create an int temp, uh, and we're actually going to have to erase this string temp. So I'm going to just get rid of it for now. Apologize for that. We'll do int temp. It's going to be equal to. Actually, we'll call this index value. We're going to call this index slot index. Okay, and we're going to set this equal to inventory slots dot find index. Now, find index is a method that allows us to search this list for something for uh, something specific. Uh, so we're going to basically it's going to search this list for a game object, and we can send it a game object using this uh, nomenclature. So we'll do x. And x can be whatever you want. Okay, x is equal to do the x space equal sign and then greater sign. So it point, makes like an arrow, and then you say x, which is the variable we just created, saying equal to slot, which is the game object that we're sending it. Now, if you don't understand what this is doing, uh, check out. Make sure like you, you can check out um, lists on like I think it's called .NET Perl or uh, the Microsoft. Information about how you can access do how you do how you use list the type list uh, in C sharp. But basically, we're creating this variable which can be anything. It doesn't have to be x. It can be var. It can be temp. It can be whatever you want. This x doesn't mean anything. It's just a name. Okay. And we're saying x. We're saying find this value x that looks like our slot. So it's going to search this list of game objects for one that looks exactly like the slot that we're sending it. Okay, and it's going to return an index value, right? It's going to return an integer, a number, between zero and the length of our inventory slots list. Uh, now that when we do that, we're going to create a, we're going to do inventory slots, and we're going to say we're going to send it the slot index, and we're going to say dot transform dot child, or excuse me, dot get child, 
And we're going to send it zero, which is the first ch child of the parent slot. And we're going to say game object dot get component image dot sprite. And I messed up IntelliSense here. And we're going to set the equal to return item icon. Now, the question is, hey, what item icon do we send? Well, this is where uh, we're going to add a variable for us. I'm going to comment this out real quick, just so we don't have this error. I'm going to control us to save. And I've actually gone ahead and added a new variable called private string slot name. So at the top here, underneath all these other variables that we've added in the last couple of videos, go ahead and add a private string slot name. And I'm going to show you where we're going to use that. In our show dragged item, we send in a string name, right? We send in the, the argument takes it a name. We're actually going to cache that name and we're going to save it in this slot name. So right under our debug statement says I am dragging, we're going to say slot name is equal to uh, is equal to name. Therefore, we can access that name later on. And I'm going to show you exactly where we're going to use that now. So again, make sure you say slot name is equal to name in our show drag item method, okay? Uh, that's the only thing we've added up there for now. So say slot names equal to name, come back into our inventory slots, slot index, this line of code that we just added, and we need to go ahead and send it the proper uh, item for the return item icon. Because if you remember, the return item icon takes a base item uh, argument. So in the parentheses here, we're going to write player inventory to your brackets, and we're going to say int dot parse remember we've used this before and the dot parse what we're going to send it is that slot name so if you remember our names were numbers basically they're labeled between 0 1 2 3 4 all, all the way up to however many items we have and so what we're doing is and we set that number to a, it's a string it's not really an integer and we're just going to parse the string and create an int we're going to cast the parse as an int uh, and it's going to search that index value. So let's say the slot name we took was zero. Uh, it's going to convert it to an int, so it's going to be zero. And it's going to say, "Hey, give me the item that's in the index in the position of player inventory index value of zero. And it's going to return an item. This is what this code bit does. Okay, and this is going to return a sprite. Now we've done this bit of code before, right? We've looked at our inventory slot game object. We've looked at its transform. We've gotten its child, which is the item icon. Uh, game object that's a child in our prefab, and I'll show you that now, just so you remember. We have our item slot prefab here, and this is the child that we're referring to, right? This is the child get child index value of zero. This is the first child in the parent item slot. So we're searching, we're finding that child, we're getting its game object, then we're going to get its component image, and then sprite, and we're going to set it equal to the icon we need. So hopefully you get that. Hopefully I've explained it well enough for you to understand. Uh, and now we're going to do a couple more things. We need to set the dragged item icon to false. We're not dragging anymore, right? Because we've clicked down. So we're going to say dragged item icon, excuse me, dragged icon dot set active. And we're going to set that to false. We're going to go ahead and say item being dragged is equal to null. We're going to get rid of it. We didn't delete it right because it's still in our player inventory but we don't need the item being dragged reference anymore it's gonna get replaced later on so now we do that we're gonna say being dragged is equal to false and then we're gonna return slot name pretty simple uh, in a minute I'll write some comments about this uh, just so for the clarification we'll run through everything make sure it all works and stuff but basically this is the method we have here item add item uh, to slot it takes a slot a game object we called slot and it returns a string which is the slot name control us to save make sure you got all that written down come back to selected item and we're gonna add one more line of code here and it's gonna be this dot transform dot get child uh, excuse me, zero, and we're going to say game object dot set active, and we're going to set it to true. Oops, excuse me, true. So what we're doing here is we're finding the game, we're finding the the proper slot, we're renaming it, we're getting the proper icon for our item, and then we're going to just turn it on. We're going to set it equal to true. We're going to turn that icon on, showing that it's uh, that there's something in there. Now. I'm going to control us to save. Hopefully we have everything working fine. We'll see if we have any errors and stuff, we can fix it. 
Looks like we don't have any errors. I'm going to go ahead and press play. And you'll see I'm clicking and I'm dragging an icon, right? Down here in our console it says, hey, I'm dragging this icon. And when I click, it moves it. And we can see that here in our canvas. In our, uh, in our inventory window, we have all these empty slots. And now, and you see, the item value corresponds to the player inventory. It doesn't correspond to the number of slots. So we know this is empty. We know this item's one. I can click it and move it. Let's move it to here. See, it's moved it up in the name. Clicked it. And we, and we know we have the same name, right? We have this slot's empty. This slot's item 65. I'll move it here. Uh, and it's still empty, slot 65, working just how we want it. Now, this is where I'm going to leave the video off at uh, for now. we I, I'm going to do a cleanup video, uh, which will be the next video, where I kind of just discuss briefly uh, about some ways that we can make this a little bit better. We can. I'm going to introduce some ideas and concepts to you guys. I'm not going to code them all because I, I want to move on to some other things uh, that I've been really wanting to make some videos on. Uh, but basically, this is a slot item slot inventory. You can use... Many of the things I've talked about in the past several videos to really create your own unique inventory system. Uh, now, just as a clarifier, you know, this isn't the best way to handle this. There are a couple other videos on YouTube that are really good. They explain some other different ways to handle this. This is just my implementation of it. Uh, and hopefully you guys have learned something and hopefully you can use it in your projects. Um, but right now, I do want to add some comments to this add item slot just so you guys kind of remember what it's doing. Uh, Oh, I'll just go ahead and briefly explain it again. Basically, when we click down, when we're dragging, you control to save. When we're dragging and we click down, immediately we are going to run this code, and we're going to run, we're going to run the method item slot or add item to slot, and we're going to send it the transform that we just clicked or the game object that we just touched, we just clicked down on, right? And when we do that, we're going to first get an index value, a number. Uh, that is in our inventory slots game objects list that we created oh so many videos ago and it's going to return an integer and we're going to use that integer here to find the proper icon slot and we're going to get trial transform and all that stuff now now I'm looking at this we don't really need to do all that uh, there's one way we could do we can just say slot uh, let's just test this out we can say slot dot get uh, tr excuse me transform dot get child uh, zero Look at that. We're refactoring right now. So we'll say get uh, slot zero. We'll say get game object. We're going to get its component uh, image. And we'll say sprite. And we're going to set that equal to this return value. I'm going to comment out this line of code here. And let's see if this works. It should work fine. Control to save. Let's go into Unity. Press play again. And let's see if it works. Yep. It works perfectly, uh, and, and I'll explain what I just did. Basically, this is kind of this index value. We don't. It's kind of redundant. We don't really need to do that, uh, or not redundant. It's just it's doing too much. We're basically converting two lines of code into one line of code here. Uh, we don't need to do this find me index method, or we don't need this find yeah find index method. It's kind of a waste of time, uh, and we are basically doing we're eliminating this part this line of code here and just saying slot because we have the game object we need. So that's cool. We changed some stuff here. Uh, made it a little simpler. So again, let me explain since I've changed it. Uh, we're doing, we're passing in a game object slot and we're finding its child and we're getting the child's component image and we're setting that sprite, that image equal to the item icon that we need that's in our player inventory. Uh, we're turning off the, drag, the dragging icon or getting rid of the item that's being dragged and we're saying we're not we're no longer dragging anymore and then we return the slot name which we use to set the game object to the its new name pretty simple hopefully you've learned something hopefully you stuck around for the whole video please like subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time